Good morning. My name is Susan Stotterell, and I'm the host of Beyond the Books, The Language of Success. It's an interdisciplinary podcast on child and adult literacy. And today I would like to talk to you about the type of literacy that I was deficient in and how it impacted my whole life, as it does other people too. I was brought up in southwestern Kansas, 16 miles from Colorado and a little over 20 to Oklahoma in the middle of nowhere. I was the only kid that liked classical music. So I was totally alone in this county of 1800 people. The nearest city was 285 miles in, in any direction. The first time I saw a violin or heard an orchestra or saw ballet, I was at a music and art class uh, camp in Eastern Kansas which is more populated than where I was from. And I saw my first violin, heard an orchestra, saw a ballet, and I was captivated. I was sold that I wanted to be a musician. So I went to school as a music education undergrad, and then later on changed to vocal performance. Where I went to school as undergrad, we had ear training and sight singing two times a week for two years. When I eventually went to Peabody to get my master's degree, they had ear training and sight singing for four years, five days a week. So you can guess who was a lot better at it. And it affected how you learn your music and not being exposed to the culture. Kids from the larger places that went to music school had been around all the culture and they knew things. But all I knew is I wanted to sing opera. And so that is exactly what I did. And I was in New York City for quite a while and I sang solo, I sang in choruses. I was a music director, conductor, composer, uh, just about everything and an administrator. And then I finally moved to Asheville, North Carolina where I decided I was writing middle grade books. And that's what I started doing. And as I looked into what kids were learning and how that if you're not already literate at a fourth grade level, the chances of you getting over that as you progress through school is really, really difficult. And if you can't, if you are not literate, you cannot work like 20% of people cannot make a living because they're not literate enough to hold a job. So today I just wanted to talk about how important literacy is. There are a lot of misconceptions about literacy. Most people think it's just reading, writing, comprehending and arithmetic. And that is so far from the truth. There are over 20 different types of literacy that people need to have to make a difference in their lives in this really complex technological world. One form of literacy is called emergent. These are the skills that a baby learns from birth and until the point that they are able to have their parents read to them. And if you have illiterate parents, you know 30% less words by the time you go to pre-K you're already behind before you start. It is so important for people to read to their children. And yet 30% of the population can't read a picture book to their children. In today's media, you see a lot of ads about artificial intelligence. I use artificial intelligence to check my writing for grammar and punctuation and things like that, but I don't use it to write. And we're constantly being bombarded in advertisements that, oh, you don't need to write your business email to anybody. The artificial intelligence will do it. But here's the thing. If you don't do it yourself, how do you know that what is being said is correct? You have to be able to understand it. And not to mention that, I have done a few little things as an experiment. It just comes off too perfect. It is not the way people talk to each other in business. There's no, hi, how are you? What are you doing today? No, no, it's just a factual, like you went to Wikipedia and repeated it. 
So it's good for some things, but you shouldn't rely on it in order to do your work. You need to be able to know how to do it and have the skills to do it, to be able to think. You need critical thinking in order to know that whether you are being told the truth or are you being lied to, such as in the news. We now see all sorts of literacy under attack. Books are being banned, libraries are being closed, teachers are being threatened and fired, so are the librarians, and they don't pay teachers enough to even make a living. Teachers and students, student helpers, are vastly underpaid. For instance, in North Carolina, they only spend uh, 9000 a little over $9,000 per student. And yet they are the 11th wealthiest state in the union. They have a graduation rate of about 88%, which means that that other 12% is not going to have jobs. They are going to be on welfare or they may be in prison. And in fact, people on welfare and in prison, three out of four can't read. And if you can't read, you can't hold a job. There's a lot of pushback against education and literacy. Only 40% of males go to college now, 60% of women. And it's like you don't need yet college educated people make more money in their lifetime by several million dollars. I mean, it, it's, it's astronomical. Not to mention that you learn so much more than you did in high school. Each graduate degree gets a little harder. That you learn more at one time. A lot of, there's a lot of pushback against education and literacy. Book banning, cutting education, cutting funding, discouraging kids from going to college, closing and defunding libraries, and persecuting teachers and librarians. It is a mean society out there. It's not right. People need to be able to think. But if people are able to think, then it's much harder to tell them what to do. And I think that's the intent. Money can go for everything except for teachers' salaries and for the aides that help the teachers. Most aides make under $25,000 a year for a full-time job. You can't live on $25,000. And the teachers are making like 40000 or so after spending money on education and having loans to pay. And what happens is those that are good and really care about education are not going into it because they can't make a decent living. And yet the governments don't think it's important to educate people. So we need to really think about that. Thank you for listening. And I hope to see you again soon. This is the end of Beyond the Books, the language of success. And that's the key word. You have to have language to succeed in this world.